Hey guys, it's Jess and Tim and we're back with another video um, today on what cameras and lenses we use on a wedding day and why. Very exciting. All right, let's get into it. So let's start off with what cameras we use. In the wedding and creative industry, one of the most important things, especially in the wedding industry, is to have multiple redundancies in case anything goes wrong. So when we were picking out like our gear, specifically our cameras, part of what made the cameras that we have such an attractive option was the fact that they had multiple card slots. So that's if something goes wrong with one card, the other one has all the exact same photos and videos for the wedding day because it's super important to capture those moments. It's, it is a bit of an insurance plan. Having something written to both cards is, I would argue, like almost essential. Yeah, when I'm doing photography, I shoot with the two Sony a7R three bodies on my double harness. So I use the Rose Anvil um, India Earl harness it's like super comfortable and functional. It was really well designed. So we use that pretty much for all of our weddings and like other photo shoots and stuff. It's really helpful to be able to, you know, just whip both cameras like out whenever you need it. So a harness is definitely essential if you're gonna be rocking two camera bodies throughout the day. Absolutely. And the nice thing too is they're durable. They look cool. Like they don't, like they, they're made of leather, so they have like, and they're tanned really nicely, so they look, I feel like they have a really nice aesthetic. They kind of fit being a working professional. Yes. So that's what I'll have on my harness. And then Tim. Well, I use a little bit of a different setup. So um, as much as we just said, like the multiple card slot thing is important. So that's actually why I didn't try the Canon R, um, their first mirrorless, um, well, full frame mirrorless, yeah. So I'm using the uh, R5, which has a high megapixel sensor as well. So this is 45 megapixels, really similar to your 42 megapixels. Lots of cropping room. Two card slots, so we have the redundancy. I'm running RAW to the CF Express, it's faster, and then um, JPEGs to the SD card. And uh, the thing that really got me excited about Canon and why I wanted to try Canon professionally is the 28 to 70 sort of all-in-one f2 lens replaces all of my primes so i'm shooting one camera body on my harness with one lens pretty much for 90 percent of the work that i'm doing yeah so that's his i guess you'd say that's the kind of your a cam and in some cases if we're not you know wanting to rock a gimbal and it's like you know a, a different kind of vibe of a wedding where we can just do like run and gun kind of style i would say that camera would be perfect for like adventure elopements yes. and stuff where we're on the move a lot all day and it just doesn't really make sense to carry heavy gear all around with us so yeah for elopements definitely he's going to be rocking the r5 with yes. that lens it, that'll be literally perfect for what we need it for. But for weddings, I think you're gonna be rocking that probably still on your harness. Yes. To grab some photos and, you know, Hybrid stuff on coverage. the go. Yeah. But for majority of weddings, um, you'll probably be, have the gimbal with the A7C on it. So for like the video aspect, this, this video is, you know, how to, film and photograph a wedding. So kind of how to do both like at once, especially if you have like a team like we do. Yes. So moving on to the video aspect of it, which is his forte, the um, gimbal with the A7C is what he's gonna be rolling with, um, with the, what is that? The 17 to 28 Tamron lens. So that will give like a nice wide angle, especially for those like pushing in and like, panning shots, like the stuff that, you know, you really want to look cinematic. Absolutely. So that's what he's rolling with. And the nice thing about this lens is it's an internal zoom. So the weight doesn't really shift when you are using the focus motor on the Ronin. Uh, I actually have it hooked up, in, not to the focus ring, but I actually have it hooked up to the zoom ring. So the internal folk, or excuse me, the internal zoom doesn't really shift the weight too much, which really allows me to use that focus wheel to change the zoom and uh, get some really cool trick shots. 
uh, done some stuff like in the kitchen at one wedding and can move and just do some really cool stuff with uh, this super lightweight camera body. Um, yeah, and that 17 to 28 on the full frame is just nice at f2.8. So the A7R4 will be on one tripod and then the A7C will be on the other tripod. So we'll set up kind of two different angles one that captures like the groom's face and like you know closer tighter in and then on the other side it will capture like the bride so we get both of their reactions this is especially important for when um they're like reciting vows or reactions to like little things so that's basically all the uh cameras that we use that's six cameras total. Yes. For This is for like a wedding day, like a full on wedding where you've got the getting ready, the ceremony, the reception, cocktail hour, portrait shoot yeah. um, kind of day. Not all weddings go like that. So we just really wanted to clarify that this is what we use on like a full day. And the other thing too is that, so it's nice to have the A7C like balanced on the gimbal, ready to go with the 17 to 28. And then with the A7R4, what we'll use is Tamron's 70 to 180 telephoto zoom. It's an F2.8. Usually I'm dialing it down to like F5.6 because the depth of field is super shallow at like 100 or 180 millimeters <laughs> at F2.8. Um, and usually we'll position the, um, the camera, like the A7R4 with that 70 to 180, try to get it closer to the back of the uh, ceremony area so that we can get some nice compression with the officiant, minister, priest, whoever it is that's delivering the service and, and doing the marrying. And, uh, and then we can also like frame up kind of nicely, whether it's the groom or the bride, like you said, to capture kind of reactions from there as well. Yeah. So there's a lot of flexibility too with being a zoom lens. Yeah, so that will be on the R4, like Tim said. And then we'll have something like the either the Sigma 135 millimeter. Um, I think it's this one. Yeah, we'll be using this lens on the A7C. My cameras, the A7R3s, the two photo cameras. These are amazing. So we already mentioned the dual card slots. So that's pretty much the number one selling factor. Is the multiple redundancies super important? And the next thing on our list is for sure the um, eye autofocus. It's incredible. It like pretty much instantly like locks onto like your subject's eye. This is really important for like portrait work, for like quick type of scenarios, um, like a wedding day or an elopement. So that was really important. It's why we love this camera. And it also has amazing low light performance. So sh when shooting at high ISOs, so if we're at a dark reception or cocktail hour or even portraits, like outside at night, it's amazing for still capturing detail, not being too noisy, not having color noise, all these kind of things when you get into like low, low light scenarios is when your image starts falling apart. So especially with cameras that don't have a backside illuminated sensor. Those top three things, those for sure would be my top three for why I love this camera and why it's part of our workflow. There's nothing really else in the market that compares to this kind of low light performance. So that's one of the things that was a deciding factor in our camera workflow. Yeah, and the amount of dynamic range, like the editing latitude that you have. Totally. So those are all the reasons why we love the A7R3. So let's move on to the A7C now and talk about why we love this camera. It's basically an A7 III, but with the updated autofocus that's in the A7R4. So it's a full frame sensor. You still get IBIS, which is great, the in-body image stabilization. And one of the really nice things about the A7C is the fact that it is so compact. It has the fully articulating screen and it has unlimited record time. So for example, some content like what we're shooting now for shooting ceremonies for setting up the camera and just leaving it to do video it is 
phenomenal. It's really helpful. Really love the size and portability of it. Yes. It's a lot smaller than, as you can see, even the R4 with a battery grip. So putting this in our camera bag. Um, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. It saves us a lot of space. It makes it really easy to just throw six cameras in our case and be good to go. Why we love the Canon R5, that's the next thing. Ooh. So Tim will have lots to say about why we love the R5, so I'm going to let hard camera to him love. <laughs> take the floor from here. I'm teasing. I mean... What do you love about it for weddings, specifically? Uh, the autofocus, fantastic. Uh, we have it programmed just like we have our Sony's programmed, where um, we use single point autofocus and then use back button focusing to activate the eye autofocus. I would say uh, two batteries is uh, a minimum. I would have a third battery just as a backup for this camera. The biggest advantage of the Canon, apart from this amazing 28 to 70 f2 lens, it's a game changer. I mean, Wow, like seriously, wow. There's very few things in photography that really make me just say like, <laughs> but what I really appreciate about this system is the flexibility for hybrid shooting. So I would not elect to use this as my main video camera, but for hybrid shooting, I have the manual function button set to switch to video mode. That's, that's the Canon R5, it, it's fabulous. Great autofocus and uh, this lens is a game changer and the fact that you can uh, do hybrid coverage so well. I know Customize the buttons accordingly. It's, it's incredible. And I know that some people are, are pretty excited about the R6. Um, the R5 isn't, um, you know, and I, I'm sure this is all relative and to how your business works and what your numbers look like. Um, but for us, the cost difference from going to the R6 up to the R5, getting the more megapixels, I feel like was worth it. I really like having that extra cropping room, um, especially because I end up doing a lot of the detail shots. So I can't help but feel like um, with every single shoot, we usually end up doing an exorbitant amount of cropping, at least on a couple images. So it's just nice to have it there. Okay, so first up is my baby. My career making, amazing, beautiful lens. This is the Sony G Master uh, 24 millimeter 1.4. So this lens, I love it. It has a shallow depth of field. It is a nice wide angle and it doesn't have that distortion that most wide angles do. So the vignetting crazy around the edges, the, um, you know, where someone's arm looks really weird if it's on the edge of the frame. Uh, that kind of stuff is minimized with this lens. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna throw some compliments where they're due. I was shocked when you started shooting with this lens as your primary lens, like in the studio, weddings, portrait shoots, boudoir. Uh, boudoir, like I mean, a 24 mil is not the type of lens that you would typically shoot flattering uh, portraits with, it just. I think that all comes down to style. So for me, I really like the documentary, storytelling, you know, kind of vibe to photography. So I like when the whole environment tells a story. So the thing about this is your subject still pops out like that shallow depth of field, but you're not gonna have a crazy amount of blurring of the background. So especially if you're doing like, if we're doing like elopements or um, even indoor stuff where you wanna get a more picture of the scene, this lens is amazing for that. I love it. It's also like nice and small and lightweight. This lens is also one of the sharpest wide angle lenses, not even just wide angle, one of the sharpest lenses for full frame cameras that you can get, period. So when you're using this lens in crop mode, um, which is super 35, it's basically like you have a 35 millimeter f1.8. So it's like you have two lenses in one, you can, you know, press the Super 35 mode and then that saves you from cropping in post. It's definitely gonna be on my harness for the wedding day for most of the 
if not all of the day. Okay, so next is the 50 millimeter 1.4 Zoni, Zoni, <laughs> Sony Zeiss lens. I feel like the 50 mil focal length is one that I really prefer. It works for me. I like it for um, just kind of classic like portraits, um, as well as more like documentary style shooting. The incredibly fast aperture, one point, it's no 1.2, but it's still 1.4. Um, it makes for the dreamiest bokeh. It produces incredibly sharp images. And to top it off, the Zeiss, you can just see it and feel it. It has amazing build quality. Like when you're holding it, like I don't know if anyone else is a very sensory person, but working with this type of high quality gear, um, you can just tell that it's made really well especially in comparison to the the Ouch. Sony's 50 like this feels like a little piece of plastic this feels like a beast yeah and it you feels know, like a pro lens it does and it is it produces amazing photos we've already talked a little bit about the Sigma 85 mil 1.4 I've used it for a couple family shoots I've said I'm really excited to use it it's got also, you know, the great depth of field, also very sharp. Um, also the fact that you can, like, it has an aperture control ring on it that you can also de-click. The other thing about this lens is, I mean, for an 85mm f1.4, I would say that, like, the, the bokeh is a little creamier, a little more pleasing, not as jagged as on the 85mm f1.8. It's, it's nice and small and portable still. Um, not as small as the Sony, but yeah. you know, the build quality is amazing and you know, the image quality is great out of it as well. So uh, the next lens that we'll be bringing to shooting wedding days is the Sigma 135 f1.8. Yeah, so this lens will be on either the a7R4 or the Sony a7C on a tripod for the ceremony. That will be one of the lenses. So this is beautiful. I've used it as like my B cam before for, you know, kind of like closer up type of po portrait shot. The bokeh is beautiful, the separation from the background. It's just one of those things that you'll get with an F1.8 lens. It's, it's gorgeous good quality. The amount of compression that you get from this lens is incredible. I would recommend experimenting with stopping it down, even stopping down to like f5.6 if you want to get more, like increase the uh, the depth of field, like increase what's actually in focus. Your out of focus areas are still beautiful, um, but the compression on this lens is just gorgeous. It's, you know, rivals with some of the zoom lenses where you're in all the way. The reason why that will be on one of the stationary cameras is because it gets good reach. It will be on a camera that has really good autofocus. So between, you know, the bokeh, the image quality will be on our stationary camera. Yeah. And then on our other stationary camera, we will have the Tamron 28 to 200. So that lens, we can also zoom in. And I've seen Tim do this like on a wedding day where he will circle back and he'll check the angle on the camera. And if it's not working or if it's been a while, he will adjust it. So having one camera that has a zoom is actually like super important for our workflow and for, you know, making sure that that really important part of the day the ceremony itself is getting the proper framing and that you do have versatility. Okay, so next, we've already talked about it a little bit, is the 17 to 28 Tamron lens, which will be on the camera that's on the gimbal. It's very lightweight. Its minimum focusing distance is extremely close, near macro rep, uh, reproduction. Um, it's also a relatively cheap lens. I just don't feel as bad bagging it up, crashing it against my gimbal, <laughs> doing things like that. Um, and uh, surprisingly, it's also been quite durable of a lens as well, even though uh, it does seem to be made of some of these kind of cheaper materials. And um, it, it's also not too distorted. Yeah. So it's lots of pros, just what we're looking for. The super wide effect is great. There's lots of things that you can do with it. You can get creative. In our workflow, are mostly just going to be using it for video, but yeah. 
The 2.8 is nice because from the 28 mil, you can, again, use the APS-C, the Super 35 mode, to punch in. And we always program that to um, one of the custom keys. So we use the trash can custom key <laughs> as our Super 35 on all of them, uh, all of our cameras. So that can be quite nice to get that extra reach. But I wanna remind you that the minimum focusing distance is quite close, which makes a big difference for detail shots, but also for creating some nice bokeh effects with the f2.8 aperture, which you might not typically associate with very creamy um, uh, renderings of the bokeh, like I was talking about with the 70 to 180, having that close focusing distance and actually mimicking the 55 mil f1.8 or the 85 mil f1.8 beautifully. Okay, so that is pretty much all of the Sony lenses. So that covers my cameras, like for photography, it covers the camera for video on the gimbal, and then the two Sony cameras that are stationary for the ceremony. And now we'll move on to the Canon lenses. So currently we only have two lenses for the camera. So Tim has already talked a little bit about the 28 to 70. It's you're a favorite of yours for sure. I, I think this is probably uh, one of my favorite lenses I've ever shot with. Um, it's incredible. It can replace five primes. I also feel like it unquestionably can replace my 28 to 75 constant aperture f2.8 zoom. It has a relatively close minimum focusing distance of about 0.2. I think some people will complain about how big the lens is. It's half, it's uh, about 3.15 pounds, so not a light lens. However, if you compare this to carrying the 28 mil f2, the 35 mil f1.8, the 50 mil f1.8, and the 65 mil f2, which, oh, and by the way, in the 40 mil, F2. Uh, if you compare the weight of all of those, it's actually the same weight, and it's one camera body, one lens for shooting, um, establishing shots, for shooting things like uh, portraits, group portraits. Everything can be done with one lens. It's pretty incredible. And the F2 aperture um, obviously is wider than F2.8. It's one stop faster, so it gives you double the light. But this lens is beautiful. It's got that um, L-series sort of secret sauce from Canon where the out-of-focus areas render in a really creamy, very beautiful way. So I'm really impressed with this lens. Um, I mean, this lens is why I wanted to go with the R5. I have compared this against the Canon 35mm f1.8, which... Which is his other Canon lens. Yeah, so this is my, my backup lens, and I'm, I'm quite happy with this. It certainly isn't as sharp as this. 28 to 70 zoom. It also isn't as bright. This is a 1.8 and this is an f2. The light transmission is not the same. This is actually a little bit darker than my f2 zoom here. This lens purportedly has a larger imaging circle on the sensor. Therefore, the IBIS has a little more wiggle room, so the Canon literature says, with this lens. And you can get eight stops worth of image stabilization. And with the dual IS, with this lens, you're supposed to also get eight stops of dual image stabilization. I hadn't gotten any warble with this 35mm with its dual stabilization at all. I mean, you can like be a very poor videographer as far as like steadiness and holding the camera well and still get really smooth, like very nice video with this 35mm 1.8. All right, so that's all of our lenses. And I've already shown you um, that we also have a 50mm 1.8. We also have a 28 mil F2. The, both of these probably won't ever get used. They'll be in the bag. It's kind of like if something happens with my 24 mil, I can still have like a decently wide and shallow depth of field lens. So that's all our lenses and cameras. So now we're gonna get into talking about how we shoot. So often what Tim will do is he'll just drop me off like at the bride's location, and then he'll make his way to the grooms. Okay, so when I arrive at the bride's place, I'll have my harness, I'll do my photo and my video, and Tim will have the car, he'll have all the gear with him as well, and he'll just have his single harness with the Canon R5 on it. So the getting ready portion of the day is often either in a hotel room, an Airbnb, a room in like their personal home. It's really one or the other uh, from our experience. Typically it's 
tighter quarters. It's not always like a super wide open room like some of our shoots have been. Like Bardon and Giovanna had literally the entire common area of their condo yes. to use. That was beautiful. That was. <laughs> so it's not always like that in every scenario where you have a lot of space to work with. So having the 24 mil and also having, I would say it would be smart idea for me to have my 50 mil on hand as well. Just because when you're in those tight quarters, it might not make sense to be using an 85 mil. So I may swap out the 85 mil for the 50 mil depending on the size of the room. But typically I will be going with the 24 mil and the 85 mil to the getting ready. And then another thing um, that I think is helpful to keep in mind is you're shooting always with primes. You're never shooting with zoom lenses. No. <laughs> yeah. So can we, we can talk about that a little bit. Personally, I like to shoot with prime lenses um, for most of the day because it allows me to get more creative with my shots. I would literally be so annoyed if I was just standing in one spot and just zooming in and out. Like, I like to like move my body, like get different angles, stuff like that, like throughout the day. So having two prime lenses, like just really speaks to my personal style and how I like to shoot. I think you also, there's a certain level of confidence that's required around shooting with like the 24 mil. Like you're not afraid to show, as you were saying, like more details of a room. Having the wider angle also and such a sharp lens and such a big sensor, <laughs> all of the things allows for some cropping um, in post. Like if you want to get more creative with your shots and you're like, eh, I actually might like that in a little bit tighter. It's, it, it gives you the room to do that. So that rolls with my style as well. Tim will arrive at the groom's house and he'll have the 28 to 70 and we've already talked about this lens extensively so we're not gonna go into too much detail about that. But the versatility plays a big role in this part of the day, having the wide versus the zoom and photographing beautifully. I'm sure you'll also have the A17 with you with some kind of zoom on it. Yeah, I mean, I'm bouncing between the 85mm f1.8 because it's just so compact and works with the a7C, like, you know, the kind of form factor really nicely. Um, but also uh, the 70 to 180 f2.8, just, I mean, the um, low light performance, like the high ISO values that you can get away with on the a7C just works with, you know, the f2.8, no problem. So we'll probably be rolling with a similar setup as the getting ready, 24mm 85. I, you know, really for the whole day, I feel like that's pretty much what I'm gonna roll with, with maybe switching out to a 50 mil sometimes. But yeah, for the first look, definitely 24 mil and 85 mil. Tim has shot some great shots uh, during a first look on the 135. I'm sure he'll get some really great shots on the Tamron 7180. Typically, it's always one wide shot and one like tighter zoomed in shot that's gonna help you for like the whole day to have th those two kind of looks. And it, it I think gives nice options as far as um, you know building albums and, and just telling a story with the images throughout the day. Having versatility is important. I feel like we've kind of cracked that code with yeah. our setup. Okay so moving on to the ceremony we've kind of already talked about this, I'm gonna be rocking 24 mil and my 85 mil on my harness. And Tim's gonna have the 28 to 70 on the Canon R5 and he'll have the 17 to 28 on the gimbal, like as well. And then the stationary setups is gonna be the A7R4, capturing one angle with the 135. And then the A7C capturing another angle with the 28 to 200 or I guess the 70 to 180 because it's yeah. not gonna be on your camera because you're gonna be using the gimbal. Yeah, there's so many different, I mean, everything from like cottage weddings, like elopements, um, dark churches, uh, that seems to be the minority of what we shoot, but there's just so many different locations that having lenses and, and defilters uh, that can help to just shoot anywhere at any time. So yeah, having that versatility I think is important. And be able to like, craft what shot you're going for and not being limited by the focal length. So like having like 20 to 200 and also the 70 to 180. Yeah, 
also goes along that theme of versatility that we've really been like running home today. I think one of the most stressful things for me when you're in the field is, I mean, obviously like there's some basic rules like knowing your cameras, uh, knowing how they function, knowing like, you know, programming all the quick buttons so that you're not playing around with menus like on the spot. Um, but then also having like the versatility with your gear is helpful because you want to be able to shoot whatever it is that you're presented with. Um, we don't shoot in this style where everything is a curated image and everything is posed. We do, I would say a lot of our deliverables are rather candid. And documentary style, like we do do some shots where we're like, okay, like do this, like give each other a kiss or whatever, like that where it's a little more curated, but all the organic moments that happen is documentary style. Yeah, so moving on to the portrait shoot slash cocktail hour portion of the day, still the same thing. 24 mil, 85, 50 mil to swap out whenever, you know, I see fit. And arguably, same thing for the reception as well. We've got like a pretty tight setup where like we're not going to be switching lenses like very often. Like the opportunity to switch lenses will be at the more low key parts of the day. So the getting ready, the reception, that kind of stuff where everyone's just doing their own thing and it's not like important moment after important moment all in a row. We're not really switching lenses out during the ceremony. If we decide to do that, it will be like at the getting ready or at the reception. Okay guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. We have talked about all the cameras and lenses that we use for filming and photographing a wedding. Um, you can follow us on Instagram um, at Mountain Studio underscore Hamilton. We'll be on the screen and our wedding profile is there as well. And we will see you next time. Take Thanks care. guys.